Hello, Johnny. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Yeah, really good. Thank you. Good. So this is a, a lovely chance to meet and chat today. And also, I guess, in a sense, a bit of podcast cross-pollination. Because you yes. started your podcast, I Am, which I very much enjoyed listening okay. to. I'm loving it. And you've had some brilliant people on so far. You've had one of my friends on, Henry Fraser. Yep. Yes, Love yeah. Love Henry. Yeah. Rhonda Byrne. Yeah who I think of as my spiritual auntie, although I've only met her twice, but I, I love her so much. Um, talk to me about the name, because I know it's got a particular resonance for you and, and, and a meaning, and I'd love to hear more about it. Uh, yeah. I only I find myself fascinated by potential for for the boundless, for that feeling of of just feeling like anything is possible that makes life, I guess, so meaningful and you feel so connected you feel so safe but so so big and so much opportunity and I've always tried to find that by going I am what's next what am I going to become that's going to bring it and I guess this is about the exploration that what it is that I've been looking for and I guess what most people are is actually already there in the I and we're heading away from it with the I am what's next so trying to bring people back to the simple idea about being you know I am is the being I am something else is the doing and the becoming and we're kind of like let's move away from the doing and becoming and explore the boundless of the I am to find just how fascinating and endless that exploration is there and how small and I guess limited it becomes the further we you know head down the rabbit hole of trying to find being at the end of all you're doing you know I'm going to do all this and then I'm going to become this and then I'll be this I've yet to find someone that's reported back on that with any great positivity. Mm. It's always a, it's always a bit of a, you know, kind of a, uh, a bit of a goose chase. And for me, I was lucky enough to experience that, not in any way disappointment, but a little bit of the shock of the reality of that early on in my life, which was enough to at least give me a bit of a nudge to say, you know, maybe you need to look somewhere different and, and getting a chance to speak to other people, get them to to open up. And when, especially when they come from specialist areas, so many of them scientifically researched, so many of them obviously personally experienced, there's so much truth and, and of personal truths to them there and so much commitment and and devotion and feeling and, and honesty it's just a really nice space to go into when you, you find yourself surrounded by a lot of the other stuff in your daily life. Well, we're all kind of obsessed with like looking for a definition to describe ourselves to, I guess, other people, but also to find a sense of self-worth, which doesn't lie in that area, but we, we think it does. Whether it's you know labels we give ourselves, I am a mother, I am a broadcaster, I am a friend, or whatever it might be, um, rather than, like you say probably regressing back to how we were when we were first born just as beings without there being you know you're just you you are a baby and that's the only label you've really got at that point you're you're a being and and there is that sense of all knowing in in that space rather than I'm defined by this that means that I can do this I can't do that we're so culturally obsessed with it so I wonder how you found that progress and found that process regressing back to I'm a being. I don't need to be defined by my career, by my status in, you know, society. For me, the the amazing part of it is that the I am part is in everything. So in every experience that we're having, or well, I'm having as as the struggles, the I am's in that as well. It's not it's not a kind of oh, I've I've lost my being. It's there everywhere. And it's actually sort of in a way, I guess what I found to be a little bit the process for me is is recognizing that where there's that resistance and that that sort of struggle there's a an opportunity a meaning to it to uncover and the uncovering of it is in the letting go not in the getting a pad and paper and going right let me write this down and deduce and calculate what these messages mean it's in it's in just the giving up not not sort of giving up in a sense of I don't care anymore, but giving up in the sense of trying to 
be something you're not. But the the thing I found most difficult maybe at the beginning was that you it's difficult not to get caught in that trap of you think because you've read a lot about what other people have experienced. You th- you then start looking for that and you're trying to be that. Mm. But just to completely surrender to the unknown and just give in and just see and and not analyze but just observe and you mentioned about that space of just just being aware now we're aware all the time um but that awareness for me just feels like it's it's veiled by all this other stuff and as you unveil it the awareness kind of comes back and i think for me just recognizing straight up when i'm in that resistance is the first part without doing that you always do it at the end of the day you get home and go oh, it's been a stressful day it's just an opportunity missed that day represents a life you know it's like getting to retirement oh it's been a stressful life you're kind of like but find it now when you're in the middle of it and i find that you know when if you're in a bit of a an argument with someone in the middle of it when you're so keen to win an <laughs> argument and you want to get your point across and you're going I, and then just to go now's the time in the middle of it to go what am I doing? Yeah. What am I trying to achieve it? Is life going to be fantastic when I win this argument? Is it going to be better? What am I looking for in my life? I'm looking for a connection. I want to feel worthy. Am I going to feel at the end of making someone else feel less worthy? Or am I going to realize it's here now? And amazing things, you know, being able to, I've had a, a couple where you're in the middle of a contest like that and right slap bang in the middle of it, you're able to stop and just, with all this going on, just say something that no one else is expecting, such as, I, th- you know, I may not agree with what you're saying, but I just want you to know that I really care about you. And you see the energy has changed completely. Yeah. But you've got to mean it. Otherwise, it becomes another tactic, which everyone's <laughs> looking for. Like, how can I win this argument? Tell them that you care. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> that hasn't worked. What do I do? You've got to mean it. You've yeah. got to genuinely. Yeah. People keep saying to me about, how do you create team spirit and and how do you get people to gel together and how do you get the best out of people when it comes to the sporting side? It's like, well, you got to genuinely, absolutely love them, full stop. And when you do that, you don't need to ask anything else. You'll know. But But it's the vulnerability of saying, but that means I have to give up on so many things I've written down as unacceptable. Yeah. People can't do this to me. And I can't have that happen to me. And, and this person could take away this from me. It's like, but as long as there's that, you won't have what you're after. And it's often we get that team spirit when everyone for a brief moment has all their needs satisfied externally. And they all agree to be like, it's okay. And they have brief team spirit, but then it goes because someone's needs don't go. And then you have all the dynamics change and what have you. So, yeah, I think for me, it's it's just been immediate, recognizing immediately and then understanding the answer is never in a new tactic, a new learning, it's its in letting go. Yeah. All learning is letting go. And that requires a huge amount of trust or faith or, I don't know, hope maybe because you don't want to surrender and think, oh, well, it's all going to go to shit. I'm just going to give up now. It's letting go with a sense of trust that all will be as it's supposed to be. How long did it take for you to, I guess you have to cultivate that kind of trust. Yeah, and it doesn't finish. There's no point you say, I've done it. I've done trust. Mm. It's like, no, you've done it right now. Yeah. Next moment. And you don't also want to finish. Because when you finish... Then what? Well, essentially, if you've done it right, I presume that's time for you to go. Yeah. Because what else is there? We're here to to have the, the, the constant journey of uncovering more and more of who we are but you're not you're not going to get there so to sort of think again this is one of those where I'm going to conquer trust it's like no you won't it's a brilliant thing you don't conquer desire you don't satisfy desire because if you do then life is built upon for me anyway the desire the desire to breathe must be there to carry on living so if you remove desire life can't function everything is built upon things want to live and be and so you're always going to be unsatisfied. Mm. You're always going to feel slightly unworthy because why? Because as you find a level of, I guess, 
connection with this is what I want and I feel worthy of it, you're then going to want more, which you don't feel worthy of. So then you're going to bridge that gap. And it's, that's the journey of expanding, which the universe is doing. So why shouldn't we be, you know, as, as part of it? So I think the unknown part for me has been a big challenge and, and always is because it creeps in. You want to the guarantee of how things are going to turn out. You know, you might turn up to a, a chat like we're having and think in your head, I'd, I'd like it to to sort of go a certain way or or people to feel it makes an impact or but actually the real power of it is in being completely relevant to just now which means that letting go of all that allows you to be fully present and allows what's absolutely relevant in a connection between us to be here if I come here with a script and you come here with a script as you said, like being a mother, well, this is me being a mother. It's yep. like, well, just be you. We be each other and we'll go, we'll get exactly what this is supposed to be. Which is a relief because I think in life, aren't we all sort of pretending quite a bit? Like I, <laughs> I was thinking about this yesterday. Even when I go on the school run, sometimes I was saying this to Hanson. Sometimes <laughs> Name drop. I'm saying this. Yeah, you've said, <laughs> you've, you, yeah, okay. I was talking to Hanson about this, <laughs> which is not a sentence I've said before. And... um. And I, I feel about 19 sometimes. And when I go on the school run, I think, I'm meant to be 40. I'm a 40-year-old mum. I'm a mum on the school run. And I'm sort of pretending. Whereas a bit of me thinks, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm winging my way through all of this and the interactions I'm having with other people that look more like a mum than I feel. And we just need to let go. And when we do that, and when you do it individually, other people pick up on it. And it's you go, oh, thank God. I can just yeah. see what happens. And I guess... For you, that's been very counterintuitive through the work that you did in your sporting career at a world-class level. You're meant to control things for a very specific outcome. That's what you're trained to do. That's what you're told to do. That's what, at times, a whole nation is expecting of you. So how did you start to unravel that from years and years of learned behaviour to go, it's okay for me not to control every moment of my day? I guess it's the massive argument between, or, or the difference between process and outcome, is that the performance is in the process. The outcome is a result of the performance. If you put your energy in the outcome, you remove it from the performance, there's your sort of counterintuitive sort of idea and the for my uncovering of it all is that there's lots of stuff in the physical training of and a lot to do with what you're supposed to be doing in your life so I believe for that time that I was playing rugby I was supposed to be playing rugby it's what I was born to do for that time not forever but for that specific time and I was obviously meant to be who I was at that time I train myself physically in order to create uh, the opportunity and, the, and the, the structure for that to be what I could do, you know. So you become bigger, you become faster, you create sort of physical pathways and habits and memories that allow you to to be in the right ballpark. But it's the bit inside where you find the differential because a lot of people can train you, you can write programs, you can look at and that's great, but... Inside there is <clears throat> desire and, and and intention, hugely. And then it's the other part is about, as you said, trusting that my intention, that's my work. Yeah, with the, the Rhonda Burns stuff, is, is very, I find it really interesting. This, yeah. my, the intention is my work. How and when... I have to let go of how and when it comes about I have to let go of in order to free up the performance because I have to if I want to if you want the best out of me if I wanted the best out of myself I have to first of all start with understanding I don't know what that is so if I'm going to try and control my way to my best it's not going to be my best because you're all because you're already limiting what your best is in that in with that behavior because it's comparative if I've got an idea of where my best has come from it's a comparison to something I've already done yeah. which is then assuming it's on a physical level you know this is what I did and I can probably do a bit more of this that's why people talk a lot about one percent gains because on the physical level 
it is very small percentages. At younger, you get a big jump, and then a bit older, it starts to get less. And as you get older, it gets less and less, and what have you. So, but when you think this is what you know, this is my best. Um, it's just an idea that's come from something you've seen. Yeah. Now, if if we spend so much time looking and taking everything from what we're seeing around us happening now and happening before, all we can do is improve upon those a little bit. And we can't really, for me anyway, the, the idea also is that by having ideas about how and when things must happen, how they should happen, really specific ideas about those, it leads to frustration and um, fear that they won't happen, frustration that they're not happening because of the how and the when, um, trying to control the how and when instead of just leaving the intention and trusting it will come and then go with whatever is there. Like you know, like we said, the intention, I like, hope we have a brilliant chat. Right, well, every answer, hold on, I need to make sure. Now, I'm just, I'm not me, so what are we getting? You were looking at me going, what the hell is going on with him? And, and you know, like, quickly open the door, you know, where do you get out? But but at the same time, I'm, I know that, as you said, just, okay, I've got my intention, that's my work. But but the thing we get is that, no, 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 the work is you make it happen. But it's like, yes, but making it happen effortlessly through my genius and allowing that space, and that's where my creativity my intuition my inspiration my my joy my my flow my spontaneity my responsiveness comes it can't come according to an old idea where i'm comparing what an old idea says is this is how it should be even if it's it has to be better than this so which means it has to be like this which means what i'm trying to make this moment is is what i think it should be instead of allowing it to be all it can be and that's the difference between performing and controlling when you allow your performance to be all it can be you'll find your way to what it is you really want i think very quickly and very smoothly when you are working constantly against an idea of how it should be it's a different journey yeah and one full of stress and funny enough you can get there and i did in my rugby career through a hell of a lot of stress but actually on the field was where naturally i let go and that's what did it for me, the letting go. Because the stress through the, the, the week was painful and it became a bit of a, you know, a, a, a bit of a, a resilience thing. But it was nothing to do with what made me shine on the field. Because I've heard you talk about this before when you've discussed your own happiness being conditional, which I think is ubiquitous. I think most of us feel like... You know, I even noticed myself doing it yesterday. I was prepping for another podcast and I had a lot going. My husband was away, so I was trying to get the kids to school. And I thought, when I get to 3 p.m. and I've done the podcast and hopefully it's gone as to plan and I'm going to go and get the kids from school and then I can go, oh, relief, I can feel happy rather than being in the moment. And actually, when I was recording the podcast yesterday, I had this little, like, tiny little moment, a glimmer where I thought... I can just enjoy this right now and be in it rather than waiting for this relief at the end, which never really comes anyway. No. Because then you're going, I've got another podcast tomorrow. Shit, I've got to go yeah. through that whole process yeah, yeah. again. Yeah, definitely. So we, but we're constantly doing it. So again, you, we all need to stop doing that. And it's very hard. You have to almost go against the grain because in the world we live in today, most of the sort of infrastructures we live in socially and culturally are based on this sort of unspoken reward system and yeah, definitely. and it's all based on obviously with advertising if you get this or buy this or do this you will feel better you'll be a better version of you or all of these slogans that I find quite hard to stomach like live your best life and all this sort of stuff which again is conditional rather than you finding that, like it's in there anyway and I wonder if you've used any particular methods or, or practical ideas to tap into that stuff that's already there that joy the happiness the light the good stuff that's there whether you've done your best that day or it's all fallen to shit it's still in there and you know it's there for for me it's it's now or never there is no it'll be all right then yeah it's just now or never and i think f again to understand that it is exactly how it's supposed to be now. This is not a wrong turn. 
whatever's going on. This is part of the path, according to the deeper intention we were talking about before. And the deeper intention realizing itself is according to how much you engage in now. Because the other idea we're talking about with regard to what my best is, is also another idea about what joy is. You think, oh, living joyfully. So you have a picture walking around smiling. Mm, skipping through skipping, a cornfield. Yeah, yeah, and of course now you go and skip outside there for a bit and be like, is it working? <laughs> it's not it. No. It's not it at all. And I think joy is, when I've had most people talking about joy is engagement, full engagement. And the joy, therefore, is the loss of the separation between me living life and me as life, involved in life. And that separation, I guess, is the is the, the the thinking about life. What's it bringing me? Am I doing it right? Any of that stuff? Am I worthy of being here? Yeah. Any of any of the stuff. But even then, it becomes a case of oh, I'll engage when I'm when I f- get rid of these feelings. But it's like no, engage through the feelings. Yes. Engage through the feeling you've got now. So, but that's really uncomfortable. That requires me to 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 just trust and and go it's like but all of this will come down to trust but it's and in order to trust it's it's not and it's that acceptance side of it like we said before things are as they are supposed to be if it wasn't supposed to be this way it wouldn't yeah to come to that level of acceptance and trust but you don't accept the future you're accepting now which then gives you back the future. Most people think of acceptance, they go, oh, but isn't that giving, you know, like just giving in in a different way, submissive kind of stuff. You say, but that's giving into the future. An idea that says, this is how it's going to be. It's like, no, no, we're saying this is how it is. What that does is opens up the future to say, well, how can it be anyway? Why? Because I've agreed this is how it is. When I say this is how it shouldn't be, I've already decided what the future should be. And now I'm mad on, well, it can't possibly be like that which means it should be like this, which means this moment's wrong. And now we're in that space of just saying yes to now is the epitome of what you were talking about before in terms of performance on the field. When you see someone fully engaged, it's because there's a yes. And now when you're struggling a bit, that yes maybe feels a bit more like a mind conscious, I need to say yes to this. And that's where you might need to be. Yeah. But the but the real yes is when, you know, most people say big yeses when they're watching really exciting films you look at their face you're like you've said yes <laughs> because look at you're like oh yeah I'm, <clears throat> I'm in i'm completely lost in this i've lost that barrier between me watching a film i'm now in the film but i'm in the film and i'm loving it but i also know i can't get hit by the bullets and now i've got that beautiful thing of being right in it but being safe mm. you're like, that's interesting isn't that how i would have felt on the field playing in a sport where people are running into each other hard and you're kind of there's so much going on but you feel like i'm doing this but i'm not doing it you know people saying about kicking balls through a post and you know to win world cups you're kind of like i was doing it but i wasn't doing it it's the beautiful space of allowing where you can honestly say that things just happened for me yeah but why did they happen it's like because you just gave in and said it can be whatever it can be but there's a knowing that it's going to work out for me. Yeah. And that balance between knowing it's going to work out, but not having to, again, back to the how and when, not having to decide it must be now and it must be like this, but just saying, what if you walked around knowing that my it's coming? What I want's coming. Now, when it comes, you go, oh. But the beauty of walking around saying it's coming, right up to the end of your very last day, it's coming. What a life. But to get what you want and then go, I've got it, is, oh. Yeah. And to not get what you want because you think you should have it is, oh, but just that feeling of knowing that it doesn't matter what's what's this looks like, it's coming. And that's what the great sports people do. You look at them, they're, they're like, oh, dear, dear, that didn't go well for you. It's like, yeah, don't worry, it's coming. Yeah. But the game's finished. It's like, don't worry, it's coming. What do you mean? It's like, it's coming. But you've now finished your career. Yeah, it's coming. What's coming? I don't know, it's something amazing. My intention is that I want this amazing life and it's coming. It's never about arriving. You you never wit like I mean you're living proof of that because you were at the top 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 of your game you couldn't have got a millimetre higher you'd smashed it in terms of your chosen sport your expertise you were number one 
but you did not feel complete going, oh, I'm number one now. I'm That's me done. Lovely. Life is, that's that. It's It has to be continuous. Otherwise, what, what is the point? But I think we all live with that myth hanging, you know, low down over our heads that in the future there'll be a me and I've made it and I've smashed it and I feel complete and I feel amazing. But we have to feel that now for that to even be a possibility, even if circumstantially things around us aren't how we think they should be, like you've just said. We have to have those feelings and that flow state that you talk about. And I've heard you talk about this on your own podcast when you're on the rugby field and you're in that flow state and there is no future. You're in it then and there. And, you know, you were very lucky to find that thing that gave you that flow state. I'm very lucky. I experienced that sometimes doing a podcast, sometimes doing radio, but actually more so when I'm painting just privately on my own painting at home. I'm lost in it. I don't care what the outcome is. I'm not, I might show it to people. I might not. It depends. But I'm the process for me is the joy. And it feels like everything you've just talked about, a lot of it is reframing terms we think we know. So we need to reframe joy because it's not skipping around in a field. It can be amongst a very challenging time because you're working through something in your inner flow. We have to redefine ambition, I think, as well, because I think my naive approach to ambition has always been you are working to a goal and it's in the future. But listening to you talk now, I think, well, that can't be ambition because there is there is no final goal. There is no final step. So so how how do you feel about the word ambition? Obviously, it was something that drove you completely in your career previously. How, how does that word sit with you today? It's really important to have goals. And I think a lot of what we what I feel that my calling is will come out through inspired ideas about what I want to do and how I want to do. I don't know why I'm in chose to go into this space. You know, I was, I've had issues, you know, all kinds of different crises type issues and moments throughout my life constantly because of certain ways that I've come in with a certain bias or a stance on things. Um, subconsciously that has that has kind of rolled on and rolled on and gathered momentum and left me in places where I often meet insurmountable problems and I know that the the insurmountable bit is me trying to carry through holding on to who I am whereas I change me or I not change me but I let things go the insurmountable part disappears too so it always ends up in that space but I'm always feeling a strong drive towards what I want to achieve next. And that's my calling. And I, I don't have to always, I don't have to analyze it to be, is it going well, just to follow the calling to become more attuned and aware and, and I guess sensitive to the voice of me that, which is naturally coming out and the other voice, which is trying to close in from my conditioning and to follow the the inner voice and let it come out and, and follow those impulses and those insights and what have you. Um, but the big part of it for me in terms of the, you mentioned about the joy there in, in the question as well, is that the other thing that's a key understanding is that joy can come like that. Yeah. And often does. You can be having such a tough moment and joy arrives briefly. It isn't a joy. Isn't it? Isn't the other side a of result? Yeah, you know, joy is <clears> not just after exceptional, which is just after brilliant, which is just after not bad, terrible. It's like no, no. Joy is, is, is the connection to who you really are, and that connection is already there when it's revealed, and anything can reveal it. And to know that joy is, is so close. It's it's a an instant, sort of opportunity whether you're right down it's still there so you're no further away when you're right down than you are than you're feeling great and that I think is a, a powerful thing but the other part that all this kind of sits with with the ambition and and that side of stuff is the ambition is key setting goals is key because when it's coming from that inner voice it's serving that's the serving it's serving people me playing rugby like I said for me it served me in so many ways to express my my self and and my abilities but also it really served me in a way of meeting lots of those crisis moments and understanding my evolution and development as a person but from an external perspective it's something I found always quite difficult to 
to factor in was that so many people were like, oh, I've loved playing, watching you play over the years. It's been such a joy. And you're kind of going, yeah, yeah, whatever. You just think you're just saying this to be nice because you, yeah. But actually you realize that I, I do it when I watch people of playing course. sport. And you think that you're serving these people. It's bringing joy to their lives. You're being served by it. Your calling is about you. It's about others and everything. The difficult part is going back to the process outcome side is that and you mentioned about doing a podcast and engaging that joy is that that and painting especially you're creating and the process of creating being creative and celebrating your ability to be creative and your creativity is the constant connection becoming attached to what you create is the flip side yeah and you mentioned it there about when you've got no you, you you have an intention and you're doing it and it's just beautiful and when suddenly that becomes i'm attached to an idea i've got of how this should be now you're like i'm out the joy yeah and that's the letting go is saying that i'm here to to have ambitions because that's my creative voice saying i'd love to create this and i'm here to enjoy my creativity yeah for me if i kick a ball i i kick it and i think I love that I created that and I've loved creating it. And you, and I've said this to people when I, when I work with them, I say, okay, right, so here's that ball, hold on to it. Now kick me another one. They're like, all right. And you're like, what was, that's all right. I say, well, hold on to that one. You're like, this is horrible. What do you want to do? Put these balls down. It's like, yeah, now how does it feel? Ah, nice. Yeah. And it's that, it's that thing we're doing, we're gathering because we think that what I've created is me. It's like, no, you're the creator, the creativity, your creativity. You're not the created. And as when you fall into this idea that, you know, these creations are making are making me, I think I heard someone say, you know, that, that um, we, we craft the tools and the tools craft us. It's like there's an opportunity there to say stay as the crafter, just keep creating. Yeah. And so do it, love it, let it go. And when people say, but I don't want to let it go because I'll lose it, you never lose anything you've created. It's all in you. Well, we're so good at lugging around all the bad shit, we forget that we can also lug around <laughs> yeah. all the good stuff and go, yeah. yeah, I can take that beautiful feeling with me. It's already yeah. there rather than this happened in the past and this happened and this was awful. And, you know, I had a small moment of it today and I do certainly believe that everything timing wise, as you've said, is happening at the right time for the right reasons. And I had a uh, something I saw this morning that triggered something hugely painful from the past. And for a minute I thought, no, no, not not today. No, I don't want this today. I've got Johnny coming to the house. I want to be focused. I want to feel confident and like I can get into that flow state without there being distractions of, oh, but this makes me feel awful or this drags me into the past or then I have to feel shame or whatever it is. And I thought, oh, this is actually quite handy because I can walk in with even more curiosity about all of this subject matter knowing that probably until the day I die, I will struggle with this stuff like all other humans, leaning too far into the past, leaning too far into the future, conflating the two and carrying baggage around and and actually use it to to learn more. You know, that I feel so excited and I can get into a really good flow state from just learning. And that's usually from listening to other people talking and me going, oh my God, that's so interesting. I'd never thought of life like that or I could take that on board. And something you were just saying made me think about also reframing, I guess, challenge as a concept, because the ambition that you've just talked of there, where you still have goals, you're just not pinning them to an acute result. Having that sort of ambition and having challenges previously for you, I know meant struggle and struggle then equaled joy. That was the equation that I'm sure most people in sort of world class sports would feel is appropriate. You train and you fight and you struggle and you push yourself and then you are allowed joy at the end of it. And I think we probably all do that in, you know, sort of smaller ways with with everyday stuff. And I I guess a lot of that is seeped in not believing we deserve just to feel joy. Just to wake up and think, I'm allowed to feel joyful. Like I know I've I've definitely felt either uh, maybe guilt around that, that I could just feel joyful without bringing in the past or other world things going on and awful crises we see around the world. Or just getting into a bad habit of going, right, I know when I work really hard, 
good stuff happens and I can feel good about it. It's just sort of like boring learned behaviour that I've certainly got really sort of tired of, of dealing with. And I think everybody wants to know that we can just feel that inner joy without the struggle bit first. For you, do you think you weren't landing on that natural joy from the engagement and being in a flow state because you felt it, it wasn't appropriate or, or you didn't deserve it? What, what was the reason? I had a strong perfectionist tendency. Yeah, which same, which, God. which is interesting because it's funny that people put that on a pedestal as being some kind of really powerful character trait. But for me personally, speaking from my own personal experience, I'm aware of this now because you just said, so you've got it. So I'm not speaking for you. <laughs> oh, no. You can. It's oh, no. I, 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 people have said far worse. No. You can say whatever you like. <laughs> not at all. This is all about me. Um, everything's all about me. <laughs> the, 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 um, the, the, the perfectionist side is, is, was an arrogant perspective because it's ultimately saying, I've come into a life, I know who I should be. So I want to own all my learnings before I get them. Ultimately, I don't want any learnings because I already have the answer and I'm going to deliver it to the universe. And it was a, and when the universe didn't sort of agree, I got really, really sort of back up and flustered by it and sort of said, how dare you? Let me show you. Now, that's kind of one way to do it. It's extremely damaging and it divisive as well because it not only divides you from you know, the universe in that way but in a more surface level you know divides you from others yeah hugely you become hugely judgmental because you're so sure of where you are and what things need to be and it was all fear-based it was all based probably on a, some sort of conditional understanding at the beginning that that I was hugely concerned about certain things I couldn't resolve, mortality, all of these other things about shame, guilt, these kind of things. And the only way to write them was to be was to have the impeccable C V mm. by the end of it. Yeah. To be able to say, check that out, you know, to everyone. We think someone's like gonna hold up a scorecard yeah. and go, Ten, yeah. you did so well and yeah. no one's gonna do that. But that ten is such a weird ten. Yeah. Because the ten is one where someone shows you a ten, which happened to me in my life. I got shown a lot of tens. Yeah. And you kinda go, the behaviour is Oh, don't. Yeah, it's all these guys. <laughs> You're like, what do you want? You wanted a 10 and now you won't even You won't take the 10. 10. <laughs> you want to tell me that you're so wrong. And, no, don't you dare be telling me I'm a 10, you know. Uh, I'm useless. Well, hold on. Where are we at with this? It's so up and down. And I think one of the most powerful states of for me about saying, okay, so when you feel absolutely incredible the general sense is anything's possible in life and what's the conditions around that i feel effortless i feel relaxed i feel just at one i feel trusting i feel those things you're kind of like right so if we set those conditions we're going to create this sense of anything is possible when you're in that sense you're getting intuition you get inspiration you're getting all these kind of things coming up which is what makes life so expansive and such a curious adventure because as i've spoken to to someone recently telling me amazing sort of saying you know you're, you're almost allowing the the universal mind to feel through you not i'm feeling but you're allowing yourself to open to be felt through and you're like wow that's big yeah and so inspiration what's that it's something bigger than you feeling through you yeah oh and it's like what about those you know kind of intuitive moments well that's a higher intelligence coming through your intelligence whoa how do you get there well you've got to be effortless relaxed you've got to open up to it so let's open up. What else have you got to do? You've got that curious excitement and anticipation about life. Just that little niggle of stress, but the one that's on the correct side of feeling like, oh, it gives my life meaning and, like you said, the ambition. Okay, so just set those conditions. In other words, just enjoy this moment. Relax. We can't do it. No. And that's the thing is that the, the, the big challenge in life is to say, can you enjoy this moment? irrespective of what's around you because you know that when you do fall into that space of enjoying this moment and that again doesn't mean skipping around but it means just setting those conditions that you know to be true because when you say i'm feeling that inspiration give me a best experiential truth of what your conditions are like this so just let's just set those conditions as much as we can and people go i love this and 
about an hour later, they're screaming down the phone at, because they're being on, put on hold. And you're like, <laughs> what happened to the conditions? <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, I'll get back to that. Yeah, see, that's oh, hold on, no, now we're doing that now on everything. So do you, what do you have to do to do that? I have to st- stop having such an incredibly strong opinion about everything. Yeah. So when someone has a go at me, the first thing I do is like, oh, well, they're just this kind of person. No. Why not? Because that takes you out of the space. It's not doing anything to them. You can look at someone and go, oh, what an idiot. And they're in the space and you fall out of the space. And you kind of go, oh, no. But I wanted them out of the space. Yeah. So then we try and, you know, I'm, like, I'm feeling out of the space. I want you out of the space. So I'm going to try and push your buttons or whatever. But the the sheer power about, and I've heard many people talk about this in the in the law of attraction sense, is it's so interesting to think that why when you're feeling frustration and anger and fear, why does it feel bad? Why can those not be good feelings? Yeah, or helpful or, because but, but, you're or, learning. Or even just on a surface level, why when you're angry does it not make you go, oh. it's like, it, no, it hurts. Okay, why does it hurt? Because it's in um, contradiction or conflict with something which is going in a different direction. But why does it feel good? To feel love, because it's in alignment with something which is already in a certain direction. And that alignment is that, for me, that higher being. So you have that higher being, that higher intelligence is the current. And when you push against it, you get the pain. So as an emotional opportunity to say, I'm feeling rubbish, it's like, yes, I'm out of alignment. Rather than I'm feeling rubbish because that person's done that, I'm feeling rubbish because I'm out of alignment. Because if I was, so you ask yourself, well, what is my higher being and intelligence feel about this situation Mm. let me ask well they love this person which is why they feel awesome (laughs) right so what do i need to do to get in alignment with you love this person i can't well then stay as you are then yeah you're like well this is behind acceptance and and resistance because we're constantly resisting emotions because we've labeled them this is a bad one this is a good one yeah and i really like the the word you said open a few times a minute ago and i've been really enjoying thinking about the words open and closed which feel much less loaded or complex than happy and sad or any other extremes that you might put into play and I think we can more easily go, right, what makes me feel open and what makes me close down? And that's a lot of the time not about circumstance. It's about how we're reacting to the world around us and, and those choices that we're making. And, you know, you've obviously had a very extreme life. So you've come to this conclusion. First of all, I wonder, do you think you would have arrived at this place without the extreme career that you had? And also in those moments in your career where you really were feeling closed and you weren't open or in tune with this inner joy and this connection I know that you've talked a lot previously about having huge amounts of anxiety when you're at the peak peak of your career what was it that was you know not allowing you to feel that connection and can you see it clearly now you've you've sort of stepped away from that world a bit from the first point the first part of the question would I have revealed that I guess that new understanding without the intense career is that the intense career was driven by the old understanding. Mm. So it looked after itself. So it's much the same as saying, looking at the makeup I had, I had a couple of paths that were very clear to me. One was military and one was sport. But both were the same kind of idea. And both were, when I was young, quite sung quite highly to me. It was about, you know, taking on what I considered to be, you know, really powerful kind of, like I said, I had this understanding, I had to have that CV and it's like, well, what should I do? I should do, I should do whatever I can to the highest level. And what, what resonated with me at that time for whatever reason was serious competition where, and I, and what I did was, you know, I, I, I now look at people that are in the military and, I, and what they go through and what they do. I think it's, it's, it's incredible. And I, and I, when I say I was interested in it, it doesn't mean I was in any way capable of doing what they do or getting to any of that level of training and what have you. But what I did was took the same approach into sport, which is where my passion was and led me. So I turned that passion into a a do or die thing. And it was always going to happen because it did. And that led me into it, which also led me out of it. Yeah. And when you step back and 
but like one of those Google Earth things when you keep moving back and you mm. see it suddenly it becomes planets rather than just streets. You see the bigger picture, you're kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, it all links up. Yeah, yeah, it's all there. And what was I doing in the middle of it? Fighting it, right? But it was always going to go. And if it hadn't go that direction, it goes to there, and then it's still going. And it ends here anyway. Yeah, that's not a fatalistic view, but just really, I think just really understanding that there's a calling involved and the calling is strong and it may take us lifetimes to reveal that calling but the more we open up as you said the more that that calling comes out and the other part of it being um with regard to how i am now with with connections and and joy and everything i we mentioned before challenges i have challenges all the time i don't in any way walk around and think oh I have this brilliant connection to joy I'm walking around in the middle of it the same as everyone else I talk to but I and I had you know with lockdown or whatever I had a resurgence of anxiety out of nowhere just yeah but and but a big one not one where you kind of go oh there's the old anxiety that's the 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 activity and the practice that comes with it but one that hits you and floors you and suddenly you're shivering like a you know like a young child again you mentioned about what is it that that creates these kind of this resistance but it's a lot of emotional reactions to old traumas that yep. have embedded themselves and, and then, physically and being, stored yeah, very yeah. physically stored we chemically that. mentally pathways everything linked in but it hits you and it floors you the thing I think I have from my journey, if you like, or at least I just have now, is is just a, an understanding of saying yes to it and facing it and and not seeing it as a kind of, you know, why me and this sort of thing is before us. It's so much easier for everyone else. It's like, no, this is my moment. The same way that you'd say to the the England rugby team or whoever sports team you'd say right you've got a World Cup coming in a year's time who do you want to play this year to get ready for it all the best teams over and over again why you're not going to win all those games exactly so what do you want to get to your potential not that you're ever going to get there but I want challenges I want big ones and if I decide what they are they're just not challenges so yeah. I can't say, I'll have a bit of anxiety here, but can you just disappear while I have dinner <laughs> and come back just before I have my tea? I'd love it if I could well, do that with exactly. my anxiety. But, but, you would, but you would stay flatlined. Yeah. So you said you had a thing this morning. It's kind of, it's like, yeah, why? I, I, I don't know. All will be revealed. Yeah. What's my job? Just just embrace yeah, don't resist it. Don't resist it. Because, again, it, it, it feels almost counterintuitive. And I've certainly, well, I'm still in the middle of learning this one, specifically with um, panic attacks, really, which um, sometimes I'm naive enough to go, oh, I've done, I, I'm finished with them. I don't have them anymore. Great. Like, recently I reached a real milestone and been able to drive on the motorway again, which has been amazing. And I did lots of EMDR therapy to get to a place where I could sort of move through stuff that was very stored physically and um, and I could feel in my sort of upper chest sort of area bubbling away and and I'm I was like wow I've just driven for two and a half hours I had like a tiny feeling of oh it's just there and then I got rid of it and that was it and I thought wicked I've totally smashed it mm-hmm. and then the week after this was about two weeks ago I had it for no reason before I went to bed I literally was like heart palpitations couldn't switch my brain off, like adrenaline surges. And I was like, oh no, I've regressed back. This is terrible. And I sort of went into a bit of a self-flagellating mindset of, oh, this is so ridiculous, you know, and you do berate yourself and punish yourself somewhat. Whereas I know in the moments where I'm having a nighttime panic attack and I go, go on then, just have one. And then it goes, not like instantly, but it's a lot, it's a quicker process when you just go, I'm feeling panic and it it's not me. It's just there is panic. There is panic present and I'm going to just be with it and let it pass on. Because when I resist it and I'm trying to I'm gonna do some breathing exercises, I'm going to just walk around the room a bit, it's just prolonging the whole thing because I'm not allowing it to be. And I think the same can be said for most emotions that are, you know, there's ones that are highly uncomfortable, grief, awful to sit in that. But 
we kind of have to. We have to let it be and allow it in rather than like suppressing, pushing away or, or resisting it, which I think usually just prolongs it. Yeah, people, I find this, the language is so much about coping mechanisms yeah. and, and managing and dealing with it, which I think holds apart just the the implications of that kind of language just hold us apart from what's really important which is welcoming it lovingly is a different to when you're sort of like you said you're walking around thinking it's all good yeah it's all good and you're thinking i'm doing this because it's going to go away yeah and that understanding is that because i don't like you you're you're not right you're an intruder um you're and and i, I can't have you so this is all about getting you to go but the yes with a deeper yes to it is saying i'm i want to hear what you have to say and therefore, as I'm doing the, the, the work, I'm intensely aware and attuned to the subtleties of what it's feeling like. And that's where there's a conversation between me and what I'm going through takes place. Whereas the other part is a bit like I'm talking for it. You know, oh before it's God. like, you know, it's this like. This is uh, so amazing because I'd never thought to go, why are you here? Like, tell me what you need. Like, what do you what do you need? Like, what do you need from me in this why moment? Like, why are you here? Yeah. I don't think I've ever done that. And I really need to because there is always a reason. And it's usually, okay, you need to do a bit more, you know, work here on looking at the past and acceptance or whatever. I, I know that to be true. And I know when I have that panic exactly what it is. But I've probably not given it the space to go, go on then. Let's have a chat about this. What's this all about? Rather than going, la, 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 no, please don't, please don't do this to me right now. I'm, I'm, I'm 100% going to be doing that next time I have a panic attack. I think talking about the the higher being side of it, how does, would that feel about your panic attack? It's saying, I love you. What about your past you? I love you. Yeah. And what's it saying about whatever happens in the future? I'm going to love it. And whatever, however you want to find that according to your experience for when you feel at your best. For me, it's it's sort of, there's a truth to that. That there is, like we were saying before about having your teammates, if you want your team to work well, you have no choice but to deeply find out about them. People often say, you know, it's amazing how different it is when you go and ask someone some questions. It's just coming to an understanding that we're the same. And I understand speaking to you. It's like, oh, wow, you have these kind of things. Yeah, I have those. And we'll talk to anyone around and they'll be... Yeah, I've had moments like this. You're like, wow, we're all suffering. Yep. And I've done these things. And if I look at you, what you've done from a position of here, I'll go, oh. But if I talk to you and realize that you're just trying to be happier and everyone is is as constructed, I feel like me, especially during my life, belief systems on the basis of in any moment, the first thing that comes to mind is if I do this, normally reactive, very reactive. If I do this immediately, it will make me happier. Than where I am now and when that causes more issues for those around you it's because this will make me less unhappy than I am now and it's reactive straight away you know th- Im- immediate thoughts something happens and you kind of go back and it's like why because this will make me happier when you when it's a bit less urgent it maybe gets a bit more less physical and more complex in terms of you know your reputation and what have you but it's you know even survival something runs you know something comes out of the bushes at you back in the prehistoric days, you know, or, or in the, you know, the hunter-gatherer days, rather, you sort of just go, ah, run, why? It makes me happier to stay alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now you're in a social s- settings most of the time, and it's like, why do I feel like I want to... S- I've said this to that person, why? Because the immediate effect is it's, it'll make me happier to say that, or less unhappy to say this. And if they feel this, if I win this argument, whatever. But when the work is done to reveal the happiness there suddenly there's an intuitive sense about what you have behaved because there isn't a reactive sense of there's a hole I need to fill it this will do it it's yeah. like there's no hole I'm behaving now on a level of something different something which is I think of a higher intelligence because it's conscious but it's also according to that calling because the calling is no longer trying to work its way around a hole getting stuck in the hole it's like it's just out and I think that that work is worth a lifetime yeah just for a moment it's worth a lifetime of just exploring that. Even if you were only given the the guarantee, you might get one moment of it. It's like, well, what else are you going to do? Yeah. It, it, I think, you know, so much of this is about, um, well, I guess, acceptance. But um, when you're talking about that 
that whole and and we all we're all going through shit on varying levels you know it's all valuable stuff whatever you're going through most of us think we need to be fixed like that's the goal the goal is if I do all this stuff I will be fixed and I think you know when we are again like acutely looking at panic attacks rather than me think one day I'll be free of them if I just keep doing this therapy or whatever it is rather than that instead if I say I might have them forever but I will deal with them when they come and I will welcome them and accept them that's so much less stressful and less of a burden rather than aiming for this yeah like trying to be fixed you know what does what does that even mean does that even exist for anybody aren't we all just working our way through stuff constantly every day and I think you know obviously there's a huge well-being market and stuff that focuses on that fixing of people but really we just need to go we're all walking around just trying our best and I don't need to be fixed I really do feel it keeps coming back to this idea that to fix something someone must know what right is yeah so they're bringing you to a level of what they think's right it's like going to people for opinions it's like check with them if it's working for them first yeah and then ask yourself but what is working and to understand for me that you the absolute joy of it and it's always the case when i've had crises moments in the middle of it you'll do anything to just get back to the level ground you were on before you fell into this bottomless hole this experience of kind of falling without any kind of anything to to sort of write yourself or or, or get any reference for who or where you are but fast forward when a little bit when the work is being explored you get access to things that you just could never have imagined no one can fix you to that level no one can no one of any individual intelligence can fix you towards something the ever expanding intelligence and being and energy has in store so much that we can't even imagine yeah and and that's coming out in like you said small moments of connection or, or whatever it is all the time it's appearing and when these moments of deep struggle come they're doorways for me to deeper levels of it but you just have to understand you cannot know where you're heading to you don't get that guarantee and in becoming comfortable with not having that guarantee is where life exists mm. it's real life where you experience on levels that bring about understanding meaning stuff that you can't articulate explain but you just deep down know that's available and it's ready and it's being offered to you all the time that's how important you are you mentioned about you know kind of the, your importance in the in the universe and feeling not worthy but to know that it's been offered to you all the time the same as everyone else whether you're struggling that's part of the offering and all of it is part of the offering if you're just willing to say yes and it's not a case of oh, i'll get this because again we're into the idea now you're away from it it's just yes in a kind of i'm happy that this be it for me yeah that absolute surrender of this is enough and i'm okay with it and it's what's happening underneath those sporting experiences for me. There is a voice that says, I don't have, I just don't need anything future. I don't need to understand anything past. It's just, it's yes, if this be it. And knowing that there is only now, you fall in line with now. Because now isn't leading to a future moment. There's no such thing. Nor has it come from a past moment. So suddenly when you say, I have no need for that now, in terms of, I understand this absolute sort of okayness, future and past go, but that doesn't mean that your ambitions go, it doesn't mean that your memories go. It just means that you just are willing to to completely dive into the unknown. And it's and as soon as you want to then report on it to someone, I just had this most amazing experience, you're kind of like okay, this will be okay. It's not going to be anywhere near what you were yeah. like. You're now back into the realm of what we can calculate, equations and formula. Well, if I do this, I might get this and this. And you're like, yeah, but what I just had has got nothing to do with that. Mm. Tell me about it. I can't because I, to tell you about it, I have to hop into that. Yeah, and it's gone. It's in it's the gone. past. 
Because I've heard you say before, you ask yourself a question regularly. How can I feel, I don't know if this is the correct language you've used, but the most alive. And I, and I, I really love that compared to, you know, obviously this podcast is called Happy Place. And I know that's quite a loaded statement. And I wrote a book called Happy, which again is quite loaded. But I like that because... I'm fascinated by the complexities of happiness and how we're all sort of reaching for it, usually in the future, or being super nostalgic in the past and never quite landing on it being the now. And I'm really up for sort of unpicking that. But I like the fact that if our aim or focus is more on aliveness, that can mean literally anything. Because mm. connection can be good, bad, ugly, whatever. It's it's just feeling and being present in whatever Absolutely. it is. So yeah. That's a much calmer route than I am aiming for happiness and it has to be that. Yeah, definitely. And if you were happy all the time, it would no longer be happiness. It'd yeah. be boredom. Yeah. <laughs> and so, everyone else would be like, you're so annoying. You're so annoying, but also, <laughs> but you'd want what they had. Yeah. And they want what you have and you'd want what they have. You want the, yeah, no one queues up for the roller coaster ride that just goes straight up gently and then you get off. Nor do they want the one that just goes straight down and you get off. Because you want the one that goes up and down and sudden twists and turns and, and you don't know what's coming next. And at the end of it, you're never sure, is it going to finish yet? I can't handle this. I can handle this. I, I want to get off. No, I don't want to get off. You want that experience. Yeah. It's what everyone queues up. It's the longest queue in the park. When you have that, no one queues for the kind of, I mean, for the young kids, you have the gentle one that goes around the park. <laughs> the gumbo <laughs> elephant one that just goes <laughs> really Yeah, slow. you're kind of like, yeah, I can do this once, but not twice. <laughs> but, but. That's the the point is, is that, um, and that is another way of redefining, or not redefining, but just defining happiness and joy and engagement is that aliveness for me covers it in that you're just, you're in. And it's the separation between me thinking about it, working it out, going somewhere, pleasing people, trying to hold off old emotions of shame and guilt and fear and what have you or it's trying to you know, acquire new emotions that I want of this all of that is part is is thinking coming from the individual it's not thinking coming from the higher being and so as much as possible there of course you've got to plan stuff you can't ask the higher being to you know what time do I need to set off to get here yeah. at half ten you're like and nor nor can you know, I had another guest recently talking about this and the higher being is not also that bothered about your safety so you can't say, you know, should I, uh, you know, it looks fun to go and jump off this. It's like, oh, you've got to do your own decisions off on that. You have to sort of say, look after myself, safe. Do I look after my family, income-wise, earning, those kind of decisions. But as much as you can, go into the unknown. You know, I had someone talking about exams the other day, going into exams and before, standing by the door of the exam. And rather than being the one who's flicking through the text but going oh my god what are they for they asked me this and what do you think what they're going to ask you in that space to say well what i know i know what i don't i don't what's the point of this well, i want to know where i am and i want to know where i can be and i want to see what i can do in between okay what more is there yeah done and it's that's the same thing in life okay where am i now i'm going to find out where do i want to be that's my intention let's go find out what the in between looks like and that's what this is. It's the in between. Yeah. All the anxiety in the back. But it's like if you say no to it, you're also saying, I don't want this. But you, you've set your intention. And the reason it keeps coming back is because I think the universe knows what you mean, not what you think. Yeah. And what you mean deep down is, I want to grow. I want to expand. I want to be I want to be I want to be who I'm supposed to be. And the the universe is saying, Here we go. And, no, no, I don't want that. I want to be who I think I'm supposed to be yeah. not who I'm supposed to be and I want to be who I should be not who I, you know who I all I can be and that's the difference between controlling and exploring and there is parts you've got to control so that it's safe and that it's a nice structure and passage but once you're in there if you keep hold of the controlling tools you know you're only going to just make yeah you know, make yourself a, a the same narrow tunnel the whole way through and, and unfortunately as you get older it gets smaller if you don't you know keep an eye on it yeah, without a doubt. And it's that, you know, sort of old um, definition of madness that you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. If we keep in those patterns of control, we're not going to experience anything different. It will just be the same and the same stumbling blocks and the same, you know, lack of being able to sort of deal with what life throws at, at all of us. Your idea of who you are 
built from all your conditioning and habits, you, you build that wall. And as you keep building that wall, you build it from the inside. Yeah. So it gets smaller. The space inside gets smaller. You don't go outside the wall into the unknown to build you. You'd just be like, Sod that, I'm off. Yeah. So you stand in your wall and you keep building it and reinforcing it. And you can look around going, Jesus, what's happening? It's getting smaller. It's getting darker. So those moments of doing something completely different, challenging, but then facing those big challenges that comes are ways of stepping outside that boundary and going, you don't then sort of go back inside it and just push it out a bit. You stand outside it and go, oh, wow. And you st- and the best bit comes when you start again. And then you just keep leaping and going, I don't want to build anything anymore. I'm tired of building this idea, the CV. Yeah. I'm, I'm not interested in the CV. What do I need? I need to play the game in order to look after family and make sure this. I need to look after my calling so I can finance my calling. Yeah, make sure I can carry on doing that in whatever way I can. Um and and be able to express my passion but aside from that in terms of yeah having some sort of personal credit that I've taken for everything I've done in my world and this is me and this is how it stands me out from everyone else but the whole point is I want to feel close to everyone else well drop the CV then take the old highlights DVD out the pocket out the machine <laughs> and be like stop it stop watching that it's gone the it's highlights longer. dvd that's a sporting here's term. my life yeah. in highlights i'd love to see my highlights on dvd They'd or like a this is your life the red the red this is your life book yeah exactly yes. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious god i um i feel like we've only been talking for five minutes but i'm sort of aware that it's been like probably an hour <laughs> it's weirdly like been a time vortex we're just sort of st- I don't know, it just disappeared, mad. Um, which means that I was very much in my flow state and nice, very much very in much it, so. not yep. thinking of the future or the past. And um, oh, I just loved it. I can't thank you enough, Johnny. Thank pleasure. you so much for being on Happy Place. My pleasure, no, real pleasure. Thanks for having me in.